Introducing the Nexus 360, Diderio's first rechargeable omnidirectional tuner. Visible at every turn, from any angle, no matter where you wind up. Nexus 360, built for your next stage. Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Today I am at the Basement East in Nashville, Tennessee with Hermanas Gutierrez. And I feel like the man with no name with the, that music that you guys just provided as a spaghetti western backdrop. And it's sort of like a homecoming for you guys because you recorded your most recent record here in Easy Eye in Nashville with Dan Auerbach. So how's it feel to be back in uh, Nashville? Oh, it's great. It feels like coming home and uh, we're so excited to play this concert. Uh, it's sold out and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. How was Bonnaroo yesterday, or uh, over the weekend? I know that you guys performed at Bonnaroo, how was that? Yeah, it was cool, it was an amazing and unique experience. Beautiful festival, nice energy, and yeah, we enjoyed it a lot. Now I know that you guys are world travelers and uh, have lived in many places across the globe, but you're already representing some fine uh, Nashville cuisine on your shirt, <laughs> with Mas Tacos, we all love Mas Tacos. Yeah, they're the best. Yeah, and uh, as uh, we should get right into it, fellas, let's talk about your guitars, who wants to go first? I can go first. All right, tell me about your silver tone there. Yeah, so I have a 1446 silver tone from 63, and um, I got this custom Bixby made from Dan Johnson. He's the technician oh, yeah. there from Dan Auerbach. Yeah. And I remember I came to the studio and I saw him in the studio and I was like, whoa, that's Dan Johnson, because there's like a cool YouTube video where you can see him like dressed up and smoking, and he's like explaining all the stuff yeah. from Dan, and I was so impressed to see him in that space. So I asked him to do this kind of snake Bixby and um, he refretted the whole thing and I just love the pickups. It just sounds amazing to me. It's, it's my, uh, my baby. Now did you have him model that off of anything or based on like how you use the vibrato arm? What, what were there any feedback for Dan when it came to uh, creating that? Yeah, I just said like I need, I'm not really trying to grab too much like going for it. So I wanted it very close to the um, mm. center of it. And he just did it out of his imagination. Like, that was cool. Yeah, I didn't say, like, okay, I want to have a snake. He just came up with that. He's a, he's a genius. He is, yeah, he's, he he's, is. And he's a good guy, too. Oh, yeah. So lovely. So how did you guys in, get to these instruments? Because it's, it's, I know, part of your sound, and then we'll get into the pedals and amps, but how did you land on these particular instruments? For you, we'll start with the silver tone. How did you, that become th something that you use in the studio and uh, on stage? I don't know, man. Good question. I think I'm always attached to things which are not so obvious. So I never wanted to have like a big brand like Ratchet or Gibson. I really wanted to look for like um, a small treasure or a silent treasure. Uh -huh. So I was just checking online and I found this guitar in a store in, in Finland and I just bought it out of blind. Oh really? Yeah, and it just came to me and it was in mint condition and still is and yeah, I'm just taking care a lot of that instrument. Now, he said, you know, he's trying to stay away from the big box brands or the big brand names. You're holding a Gretsch, so how, how did you get with this one? I love big brands. No, uh, <laughs> funny story. I have a um, Chet Atkins uh, 6120. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I never played that guitar, but I was looking like for a sound that has is a bit of uh, full of bass. So I checked also YouTube videos, and I found one video of, a, of an older man, and he was playing from Santo and Johnny Sleepwalk. Oh. And I fall in love. And that, I bought a guitar and never tried it. And um, yeah, that's it. That's my guitar. And um, I tried many guitars, but no, no guitar gives me the sound that, 
that is like my sound. So yeah. that's that's it. Now I gotta ask, and we'll throw up a photo uh -huh. to cover us, but what's going on here with the artwork I see? And is that something you did yourself or had a friend or no, somebody? No, no, I had a friend doing the snake cause okay. um, yeah, it goes over all the guitar and um, yeah, I, I kind of customized it a bit. She did this snake and this is for example, I like to do jewelry and I'm mm -hmm. a turquoise lover. So this is a pendant that I made and I glued it on and there's a sticker from my daughter. Oh, which great. Always, when I look down, I think of her and so. You got yeah. the initials as well. Ah, the initials, yeah. Um, Dan uh, on the studio, uh -huh. he has the Rudy guitar, you know. I, yeah. I could play the whole uh, album on his guitar. And I like this, like the, the old lettering. Yeah. And so uh, I found my letters, that these are my letters, SR, Stefan Ricardo. And so, uh, yeah, I glued it on. This is an inspiration of Dan's guitar. Now, is there anything else we should know about your instrument when it comes to specs, or is it how you bought it, or did you do anything different to it? That's just, uh, that's how I bought it. Okay. I, yeah. Dan Johnson, um, he, he did, um, he also, he kind of, how do you say it? Bent or it just molded, bent yeah. it. it was, it's molded by Dan Johnson, that's like, <laughs> it's not made, it's, it's bent by Dan Johnson. In the, and, and this might, I might be unfamiliar to this particular model, but the, the bridge looks something unique in terms of how the roll, the roller on that, that were, maybe it gives a little bit more expressive through the, the yeah, I, I guess I'm not familiar with that bridge being. I mean, I do a lot of slapping and I just, um, how do you say? Put the level up. Oh, okay. So there's like a little bit of higher action. Yeah, but it, I really don't know. I'm not a guitar nerd, so it's just how I set it up and it sounds and it works for me. So that's it. Yeah, set it and forget it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Man. Now I want to open this to both you guys, and it's you know obviously we're going to go through your gear, which is pretty limited, mm -hmm. but a lot of what you do and how you express your music and your idea and your vision as artists is through how you attack the instrument, how you play. Mm -hmm. You guys don't use picks. So how did you develop your styles? Because obviously it, it's important because you guys work together, but then there's also parts where one is accompanying the other and then the other one's leading the other. So how has your styles as players both progress individually, but you know, also as Hermanos Gutierrez? Yeah, I think I was inspired by my brother because he was um, very finger picking when he was in his teens. And um, he was really my inspiration to like see someone playing like the classical stuff yeah and um so i always knew that if i'm gonna play the guitar i'm not gonna use like uh, a finger picking how do you call it like a guitar pick a yeah, petrum, pick, yeah pick so um i don't know man it's just like i love to be in touch with the materials you know it should, shouldn't be something in between yeah um so that's how i maybe got to my style i don't know and i really try to use a lot of my bump, fist bump. Yeah, do you mind showing us a little bit? Well, yeah. Like this clap? Yeah. Um, I don't know how I get it. <laughs> no, honestly, I couldn't explain it. Uh, it just maybe came to me. Yeah, mm. it's it's, so, it's such a, I don't want to say unique because a lot of people are progressive, percussive players, mm. but it, it does give your guys' music an illusion of a drummer or a bass player yeah. or a rhythm section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And true. that is so pertinent to what you guys have created in your sound. What about you and how you've developed? I mean, as he told you, um, I started to play the classical nylon guitar, the Argentinian folk music, it's okay. called milonga. So it's all finger picking and yeah, I always did that. And then I added from, I'm a huge uh, salsa lover. So I love the bass of the salsa. So I tried to play like percussion, like slapping and finger picking and bass all of this at the same time. So mm. a lot of people ask me if I slap with the rings but I just uh, hit it with the thumb, with the finger. Oh. So, for example, I do... Yeah. It's funny, because you guys both do similar things with yeah. your patterns, but it is it's very different. Yeah. I, can, I can play the, the thing. What did you play? The bueno? Yeah. I play the select. like in between claps. I don't know, he just adds a little, another layer to it. And he has a strong bass presence. Yeah. That's his salsa thing. Like he comes from salsa and I'm glad he's doing that. Gentlemen, tell me about your strings and tunings that you're using. Um, I usually have the standard tuning um, okay. on my guitar. I have some songs from the latest record which are open D tunings. All right. um, for example, Thunderbird and um, my my strings, they're gold standard heavy strings. Um, 
so I'm not really the shredder. Yeah. I don't need to shred, so I need really solid strings. That's why I'm, it's another suggestion from Dan Johnson. He, yeah. was, he was looking at me like, I think you need those strings. So I said, all right, if you're gonna say that to me, then uh, of course I'm gonna pick those. Now, is it something where you guys change strings a lot or do you prefer the dead, more, you know, almost flat round, flat wound string sound? I usually change them before every tour. Okay. And then when I go back, I change them again, just like, yeah, but I like kind of the song, not always the new, new strings, yeah. you know? And what about you? Hey, this is so embarrassing. I didn't know the name of my strings. I just know the color. It's like the okay. purple ones and this is standard yeah. strings and uh, I don't change them maybe all five months. Okay. I like to change it. I, was, I always liked it to do it also on the nylon guitar. It's like the whole process of cleaning it a bit and then putting on new strings, but uh, I don't know the name of that. Yeah, yeah. We'll get a photo of that so we can uh, help you guys out with that. Yeah. What should we know about tunings that you use or is it very similar that you're using? Because I know that sometimes you do play lap steel. Does that yeah. change anything you, you do with your guitar tunings? Uh, no, I play um, regular standard standard tuning. Uh, some, um, he, I got inspired by, by my brother to have like um, a D to, t uh, to tune it down. Okay. The E string Drop to D. it. Yeah. And, uh, but usually I play standard tuning. All right. Well, what should we know about amps? I know that we can't really see them behind us here, but what are you guys using and, and why have you chosen those amps? Yeah, so we got a vintage Fender Deluxe Reverb. It's from uh, one of the Easy Eye. Um, oh, all right. An Easy Eye amp. Actually, I just played uh, with it on Bonner at Bonnaroo and tonight, but it sounds great. It's like an old vintage. Cause I think it's even like the original price tag. Mm. Oh, wow. So that's kind of cool. Now, is, Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you guys recorded the record with Dan, you used even smaller amps than the Deluxe, yeah, like, like real small combos. I had this amazing Floatone amp. It's oh. like a little red one, and uh, it's amazing. I don't know where they're producing them, but it's a very rare, unique amp. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. And what about your amp? Um, I'm using now a new Magnetone. This amp is amazing. Yeah. And I played the whole uh, El Bueno El Malo record on the original vintage one from Dan has one okay and you can hear this vibrato on it and it's just he showed it to me and said maybe that's something for you and I I fell in love with that uh, amp it's really cool yeah it's a, a, a I know that these ones recreate it yeah. pretty well but the, the originals are yeah. they're very intoxicating uh -huh. with the vibrato it's almost it's, it's really uh, yeah it's stirring now Talk to me about, I know that the experience mm. before we get into pedals was uh, entering Easy Eye Sound. Uh, you guys did an article for our magazine last year and you yeah. mentioned that that it was silly, but you described it as Easy Eye has its own sound, mm -hmm. even though, it, you know, obviously the gear plays a part into it, but the room and just kind of the the, the, the creativity that lurks in those walls. What, what was that experience like? I think it was just a magical um, experience to connect with Dan on the, on the equal level like on the human level and just in that space in that easy eye studio like just the whole gear and it was so special you feel like so comfortable and it, you, there's no pressure it's really about creating something beautiful and with the heart and i remember the first 20 minutes like it was especially because it was about um, that vibrato sound and uh, my brother was playing the melody that we're playing for el bueno el malo and uh -huh. dan was like adjusting the amp and he was like adding the pitching and it sounded so cool mm. so we knew like all right this is gonna be great because we all talk the same language, you know. Even yeah. though we were not communicating that much, it was just like, okay, this is a match. Mm. So, I think the first 20 minutes they just set the whole mood for the whole record. Nice. Yeah. And uh, what really impressed me was that Dan is not looking for perfection; he's looking for the the real music. You know, sometimes you can hear like a chair was cracking, or you can hear s uh, some footsteps. And yeah. He wanted to to have that on the record and. I, I also love that, like the imperfection is mm. like the thing that, that really, yeah, the, has our uh, attention. The thing that really strikes me about what you guys just brought up was the fact that you guys almost had a te tele uh, t telepathy with, with Dan that mm. you guys have among each other. Because like I remember reading articles that you say, a lot of times your music wouldn't go in a certain direction based on conversations. Mm. It's just mainly you're listening to each mm. other and you're feeling the moment and being present. And it sounds like going to Easy Eye and Dan was an extension of that. Yeah. Whereas I could, could see maybe, you know, if I or any of our colleagues were going in to record with a Black Keys guitar player or singer, it would, could be very, very pressurized chambers. Yeah. So it sounds like it was actually liberating. Oh yeah, in, in so many ways. It was, like I said, we never felt the pressure of trying to perform or like, 
even to deliver. It was just really about being there in that moment and enjoying it, like being present. Yeah. 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 And you could feel that Dan was also excited to, to meet us, you know. It was like everybody was excited of what we're going to create in the two weeks that we, we were in Nashville. And um, yeah, it, it was simply so cool. And to, to get to know the whole Easy Eye Sound family, it's, just, it's really cool. Yeah, and it looks like you guys have a couple souvenirs from Dan Johnson, yeah. who's the house tech there at Easy Eye. And uh, you found some of our finest cuisine at Mastaco. So yeah, it all, it all <laughs> it's works. like hometown here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's dive into the pedal boards. Who wants to go first? I and can... OK, go for sure. it. Sure, yeah. So uh, I have my, my tuner, boss tuner. <laughs> And I have to tell you, man, I'm not a pedal nerd, so I just, what this, this is like the thing that I uh, started to collect through the years, and uh -huh. it works for me, it gives me my sound. Yeah. But I never like try to use new stuff, so this is like my sound. So it goes from the tuner okay. to the Maleco Omicron uh, vibrato pedal, because right. uh, on the tour I don't have the magnetron. Yeah. So Dan gave this pedal to me, and it's really cool, it works, it is not the same. But it's really cool. It's tiny and yes, handy. compact. Yeah. So no, actually, I start with the with the compression pedal, the MXR, all right, Dynacomp, and then it goes through the through the vibrato, and then comes my my uh, main um, pedal. It's the Strymon El Capistan, and this is like my sound because it gives me. I use the I use it like a, like a delay, and it gives me like the sensation of this person who is um, the horse is is riding. You know. Yeah. Like this. You know, like yeah. this sound. And, and with my with my slapping it's it's just I love this sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> well I, I, from the article that we did with you guys, I don't remember who it was, but one of you found the the El Capistan first and yeah. called the other brother. It was me. Okay. Hey, it was me. I was actually um um, checking out also some YouTube videos and I found it and I was like hey I need to check that out and I, I drove to Zurich and um, I checked it out for maybe five minutes and I was like that's it man I, and I called him he was uh, I think in London yeah. and I called him at I, I told him hey this is gonna like change our sound it's gonna still be the same but it's gonna it has something and yeah I never play without that so this is like my main, my main pedal. And it we'll get right back to your pedal board, but how yeah. are you using the El Capistan that's different than what he's doing? I think basically for me, it's just like a nice reverb. Okay. It's like just building up something which is not stopping. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's like a reverb, actually. I'm just using it like that. And um, it also helps me to play with the lap steel. I like to, to create this the sound of a, of a wide landscape. And I think the Capistan is pretty amazing to create this, this kind of feeling. And you both, it looks like you both have flints too. Yeah, then after the, 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 the Capistan, I have the flint, which I, I always use the reverb because the, the reverbs on the amps that we use, sometimes they don't work the same. So I always use this one. So you know what you're getting. Exactly. And then uh, sometimes I, from so, for, so, for some songs, I have the, the tremolo that I use. Yeah, and then uh, I have my uh, loop station, the Boss RC500. It's a new one. I used to have like the bigger, yeah, the 300. Yeah, but it was just too big and too too heavy. And now I'm working with this one, and it it's really cool. And I love uh, started doing loops ten years ago, and it's just it's really cool. Are you yeah. building the loops on stage? Yes. Okay. So Everything it's a lot. is a okay. I didn't know if it was kind of pre-programmed. No, nothing. It's just I have sometimes I ask uh, sometimes a fan ca uh, once a fan came and said yeah, but it, everything is like uh, recorded and we, I'm like bro, no, this is like. <laughs> 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 but thank you so much for the compliment. Cause yeah. It, yeah, I, I'm at the good level. compliment, but yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that's the 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 loop station that I work with. Yeah, it's got to be terrifying. But also kind of like it makes you really focus. It is. So, yeah, yeah, you're in the zone. Yeah. Do you also loop? No, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I mean, I mean. No, it's it's the thing where like because you, you got to come back around on the one or be of ready course. for that. Yeah, that's, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you just got a different dance you're going to start <laughs> in the that's way that the song true. goes. Yeah, now, he, uh, what about how you use the flint? I see another uh, uh, different pedal there. You got the EQ pedal. Yeah, the flint basically also just like a tremolo, like for the intros, like to add this Western element. Um, yeah, it's just the 
this kind of mood that we're trying to create. And the equalizer, I use it because the sounds of those two instruments, they're pretty different. Mm -hmm. And this is way more powerful, even like on the monitors. So what I'm doing is um, adjusting my sound with the amp and the equalizer for this guitar. And when I change to the lap steel, I switch it off. So it's just pure. And with this, I can like be in control of the output of my guitar. Yeah. And it really helps me to, when we're on tour, like I have always my sound, you know, mm -hmm. like not depending too much from the tech guy. Yeah. So whenever I feel like I need to do an adjustment, I can do it right there. And I don't have to go back to the amp. So it's pretty helpful. And um, I'm happy that I discovered this equalizer. You know, I know we're getting to the end of the interview here, but I would love to hear the, the lap steel, yeah. how you use it. And I, I'll ask you while he's plugging into his other yeah. instrument here, is have you guys ever thought about or have been approached to do scores or compositions for film or TV? Um, is I that mean, something you would like to challenge yourself of with? Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a goal that we have, a dream, but it has to be like the right person at the yeah. right time. But yeah, definitely. I mean, I like to play Red Dead Redemption and so, uh, <laughs> so it, yeah. It could, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I heard Quentin Tarantino's trying to do one last movie before so. he rides off in the sunset. Just saying, it could say be a hi. good fit. Say hi to him. <laughs> yeah, I wish I knew. <laughs> so, so tell me about your uh, lap steel here. Yeah, so I have um, a Rickenbacker lap steel, and um, there's no headstock on it. I don't know why, but I bought it in a store in Los Angeles. All right. And it should be um, from the late 30s, beginning of the 40s. Yeah, one of those old frying pans. Yeah, because it's, I think it's even later. Like frying pan was one of the first ones. Yeah, yeah. And it has to be one of the second um, editions because there are two knobs. Okay. So I can control the treble here and the volume. Mm. And it's a hollow body. So. It's just like when I played it for the first time, it blew my mind mm. because it adds so much space to yeah. what we're doing here. And we were straight in the desert with the, this kind of instrument. You guys are awesome. This has been a treat. I, I really, I can't say enough that how fun this has been to be sitting next to you guys, hearing the sounds that I've been hearing in records, uh, kind of warble through my face uh, right here on the stage in mm. East Nashville uh, at the Place of East. I thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. And all the luck and uh, success for you guys in the future. Thank you, man. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. See you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.